Bill Kuhn is the Vice President of Commercial Technology in the Wireless Group of Corning Optical Communications and is here with us at the TIA 2015 Network of the Future Conference. Hi Bill, welcome. Thank you. What are some of the trends and proof prints for fiber adoption? Some of the major trends on fiber adoption uh, in the in-building space have really been, you know, typically fiber has been going in the vertical uh, from a main telecom room up to a, a closet on the floor and it's typically been copper going out from there. What we've seen happening in the, in the big trend is that fiber is now pushing deeper into the horizontal. Uh, that's being driven by uh, the number of applications, the number of devices that you want to connect to the network. Um, and so we have been uh, and come out with a solution, the One Wireless Platform, that has enabled that conversion of, of starting off with a distributed antenna system, which used to be fiber in, in the vertical coaxial cable in the horizontal, but that was a single purpose infrastructure. It could only be used for one thing. And uh, what we found is taking that fiber deeper in the horizontal, being able to do distributed antenna system as one application riding on the infrastructure, and then being able to support other wireless applications like Wi-Fi or building automation systems, and then also being able to converge with uh, LAN networks. And con you know, so dropping fiber or copper down to a desk or to Wi-Fi access points or to any other device in the building. So that full convergence is really drawing fiber deeper into the network. So tell us about fiber to the room trend in hospitality. So that is one of the great, uh, great proof points uh, that we've seen. It's one of the areas where, where it's really taking off uh, with some major brands establishing brand standards for fiber deep, fiber to the zone, or fiber to the room. And they're doing it because they, they have had a lot of copper going to each room to support eight or nine applications within the room. Uh, they now want more and more bandwidth going to that endpoint, and so they are now pulling fiber all the way to the room and then enabling and using the Corning One Fiber Deep platform to do that, uh, but then enabling distributed antenna systems for cellular and enabling Wi-Fi and enabling all of their, their room applications on this network. And uh, so we've seen a lot of interest in hospitality. And interestingly, we've uh, had some customers that have had their conduits full of Cat5 cabling and have been able to pull all of that out, put in the fiber, free up conduit space, and get tremendously more bandwidth to the room. So it's, it's kind of a win-win across the board. And what about fiber to the edge in sports venues? In a sports venue, really a couple things I'd like to point out is one, on the, I've talked a lot about the infrastructure. And, and yes, the infrastructure is wonderful. And one of the reasons for fiber to the edge is that if you're building a, a building that's going to last 40 or 50 or 60 years, you want your cabling infrastructure to support that as well. And so fiber with the virtually unlimited bandwidth to the edge, the ability to put a lot of power out to the edge, really future-proofs that infrastructure for the building. But at the end of the day, people don't care about the infrastructure. What they care about is what they're using it for. And so we want our devices to work. We want our cell phones to work. We want to be able to do FaceTime, et cetera. But there are so many rich applications that you can layer on top of this as well. So if you put in a, a network like Corning One that's enabling Wi-Fi, enabling multi-carrier cellular, and then you have applications like fan experience applications that perhaps, uh, and one of our partners is working on a, uh, uh, a instant replay application. Um, and so you layer that on and suddenly people have the coverage, they've got the bandwidth, and they've got an app on their phone that allows them to maybe track their favorite player uh, and see a replay of that. And so you need that bandwidth, you need that capability and connectivity, but what people really care about is that experience. And that experience is, is what we're enabling with these broad bandwidth networks. Um, the, uh, our, one of the stadium applications that we did had um, even outdoor to in, so help people, applications to help them find parking, and then help them find their way to, uh, to their suite, and then even an application so they could change the channel on the television in the suite. Um, so all of that is being enabled by this connectivity. Um, you know, the video being enabled, the processing, uh, the application for the instant replay, uh, and then the apps on the phone. All of this is, has to come together as a total solution. And that's, that's the other benefit of working with uh, the large integrators because they can bring together all of the pieces and parts. The pieces and parts from Corning, then the smarts uh, from the application developers, and, and then the, the wherewithal from a large integrator to, to really pull it all together and make it happen. Could you tell us a little bit more about the shift in approach towards building networks in new builds as opposed to retrofits? Sure. I think the, you know, so I mentioned this, uh, the benefit of not having to, to stop in a closet every hundred meters. 
Well, today, many buildings, the architecture and existing buildings, are, have been built around that standard. They, they have a closet on every floor, and it's covering 40,000 square feet, um, and then another closet covering 40,000 square feet on every floor. And if it's a big floor, you have multiple closets. Fiber going to those closets, a lot of copper cabling going horizontally from those closets. Um, what, uh, what you're seeing today, and we, we run into places that have a, a, a building that is built that way, and they're planning to do a copper network, some of them, uh, perhaps, even for Wi-Fi alone, want to pull four CAT6A cables out to every Wi-Fi access point. And they're deploying their Wi-Fi at 1,000 square foot per access point. So that's 160 CAT6A cables all going back to the same closet. And that's just for the Wi-Fi network. So then consider all the land drops and, and everything else and all the other devices that need connectivity. So that's a lot of copper going 100 meters back to a closet. And so even in that circumstance, even with the current retrofit, it makes sense to free up that closet space, go fiber deeper, maybe out to a 2,000 square foot zone or a 4,000 square foot zone, and then all your copper runs are short. They're just out 20 feet this way or 20 feet that way to an access point or a short drop. And so th that architectural change, even in retrofits, makes a lot of sense. Where it makes a tremendous amount of sense, though, is a new build, and if you can catch it early enough, um, you can actually free up all of that closet space for some productive, other productive use. You know, the fiber only needs to transition through uh, from vertical to horizontal. Um, we had one customer that, uh, that actually quoted uh, throughout all of their real estate, they had six million square feet, no, it was a million square feet of IDF closet space, and they pay on average $6 a square foot a month for that. So that's $6 million a month that they're paying for closet space that they would love to free up, and, and their closets are full. So this, this architecture gives them a way to recover that space for other uses or other applications, and because you can't really convert an IDF closet in an existing building to, to something else, but it frees it up. And, uh, and then for people who are doing new construction, that's a lot of closets they don't have to build. Um, another proof point on this is uh, uh, Corning, in our science and technology group, uh, they just did a complete retrofit of uh, the land network. Now they were deciding what do we go fiber or, or copper drops to all the desks, do we do fiber to the desk or do we go wireless? Well Corning chose to go with a wireless environment. So everything's on Wi-Fi in these buildings. But instead of building it the traditional way with copper fiber to the closet and then copper out to these, they did the Corning One platform and uh, and we now have fiber going out to our, our zones, two access points connected to each one, and those fibers go all the way back to a single head end. I'll, I'll, I'll boil it down to the benefit of this though. It turned what would have been a three year, I'll call it $12 million project, it was more than that probably, but three years, to a $3 million five month project. And we've got great Wi-Fi connectivity everywhere. We didn't have to build out 54 closets, um, saved a lot of money on heating, and uh, cooling and, and electricity and, and all of that. So great, great architecture. Um, our IT folks are, are sold and are bragging about it everywhere they can. Uh, but real benefits there. Three years became five months and 12 million was, was, uh, became only three million. Tell us about uh, large integrators getting behind converged all fiber solutions. So that, that's maybe the most exciting part. You know, when you come up with an idea like this, you know, that's fundamentally fiber deep, and then you build a solution that has active electronics to, to enable uh, this fiber deep architecture. Uh, but we sell through partners. We sell through distributors. And, uh, and so we rely on the big deci the, the influencers out there. So IBM's a great example of that. And IBM has embraced this concept, and IBM has been behind some of our, our major wins. Um, and it's been interesting because, and we're seeing more and more companies like IBM doing this, but you'll see uh, entities or enterprises putting out an RFP for a distributed antenna system and for their Wi-Fi network and for a LAN network and for building automation. And, um, you know, and what these large integrators are doing is going in and changing that conversation, changing it from these different parallel networks to one fiber-rich network to converge everything. and. Uh, uh, and you save a lot of money on time, material, project management, et cetera. And you also get one project that really one, one organization to point to and say, here's what I'd like you to deploy. 
and you get what you want that way, and you get a, a better deployment, a better infrastructure, kind of a, a, uh, a base building infrastructure to really hang everything else off of. And so these integrators are helping to make that happen, um, and Corning's providing the, the solution for them to use. Tell us, Bill, what is the momentum with Corning One's wireless platform? So I'm glad you asked that. It's, uh, it, it's been uh, it, pretty exciting. As I mentioned, we've got some large integrators. We've had some huge wins. Um, and this has been, a, you know, it's an interesting business in the distributed antenna system business. And so we've got some pretty good momentum there with carriers, with our VARs and integrators, and with enterprises choosing the solution, purely from a, from a distributed antenna system perspective. But from a converged perspective, the momentum has been fantastic. We've got uh, major developers who have selected this for, um, and I won't, I can't name who they are, but very, very large, you know, 20 building type developments that are architecting their projects around this, this solution. So, so very good momentum, very exciting. Um, just this past month, we, we've got 10 new orders for the project. So it's, it's really exciting because it's, as I mentioned, we sell through partners and integrators. And, and these projects are coming to us from large, small integrators, from people who are focused on cellular, other people focused on uh, on LAN networks, on some of them are, are PON solutions, passive optical networking solution providers. And so it's just building and starting to snowball. So we're very excited about that. What are some of the upcoming platform enhancements? Well, so with the one platform, we are constantly innovating. Um, I'd say the, the uh, things that we've done this year, we of course came out with a, a new version of our, our remote access unit. Uh, that has more capabilities. At the end of this year, we'll come out with uh, uh, another plug-in module to make it a seven-band module to cover all of the U.S. bands. We've got the ability to, to put two of them together for a two-by-two two MIMO. I know this is getting a little bit technical, but a two-by-two two MIMO solution for DAS, seven-band, very compact package. So it'll meet all of the needs of all the wireless carriers uh, for cellular. Uh, but of course, as I mentioned, this is more than just a distributed antenna system. It, it also has the gigabit Ethernet capabilities to plug in a Wi-Fi access point, to plug in small cell. Um, so a lot of exciting things uh, kind of coming. The other uh, aspect is we, we will launch uh, some other products to increase the use cases. So right now, um, it's sort of a single building product, but we're coming out with a campus solution that will enable it to, to cover a, you know, multiple building campus um, with uh, high bandwidth links between buildings to connect everything together. So we are, by the end of this year, we will have finished the, the one wireless platform um, for all use cases. Thanks, Bill. It's been great talking to you. Well, thank you very much. I've enjoyed it.